Good morning. morning. On this second Sunday in Advent, December 5th, 2021, we light both the first and the second candle of Advent. Both candles are purple, reminding us that it was the king who was born in a manger. The second candle is the Bethlehem candle, reminding us that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Our readings for today are Old Testament Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, and Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Reading from the King James Version. But you, Bethlehem Ephrath, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from old, from everlasting. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Christ is born of Mary. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all should be registered. This census first took place when Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought first her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Our prayer today. Father, stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the path of thine only begotten Son, that we may be worthy to serve him with hearts purified by his coming, who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Say amen. amen. Can we say amen again? Amen. Indeed, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's so good to see each and every one of you here today. I pray you had a, a uh, blessed week. Yes. Hopefully, it was an eventful week for you in the sense that uh, you shared the good news of the Lord with somebody. Right. Or you blessed somebody. Amen. amen. You prayed for somebody. You know, that's a good week. Amen. Amen. A lot of times we assign otherworldly activities uh, and then conclude that that makes a good week. But I'm reminded only what you do for Christ will last. And so the more you do for Christ, that makes it a good week. Amen. And somebody ought to say amen. As I heard uh, Brother Phillips mention your founder, and I looked up uh, the fact that your uh, Christian association or denomination has been together for 125 years. That says something. (laughs) That said that the Lord is with you. Amen. Not that it's been easy, because he didn't promise us an easy life. Amen. That. If we want to consider easy when we get to glory now, that's, that's going to be nice. But in the meantime, he said, I'll be with you always. Amen. And uh, I'm reminded of a saying, through the storms and through the rain, <laughs> in sickness and in pain, you can depend on God. And so uh, somebody ought to say amen. Amen, man. The sister was sitting at the door when Ted said that 125, that, that hit us back at the door, did it? <laughs> I heard her comment. Amen. You have to acknowledge the goodness of the Lord. But trust me, there's, there are many that have started out and they didn't finish. There are church doors that are closed all over the country. 
And every week, their church doors that close all over the country. But God has been good to you. Been good to all of us. <laughs> so God bless you. I've had a busy week. I was in Nashville, and I did a... Uh, I went down to show love and support for some of my dear cousins, but in the process, I was asked to, to uh, uh, do the eulogy. And they say, be instant in season and out of season. <laughs> Well, you know, some of you are old enough to remember the TV show, Have Gun, We'll Travel, right? <laughs> well, have Bible, we'll travel. <laughs> Amen. And then came back yesterday and also did a homegoing service uh, for someone, uh, a dear friend and their family. So uh, we never know, but we thank God. Amen. Amen. That, I think most of y'all know it wasn't long ago that I just stepped out of the hospital. <laughs> Amen. It wasn't long ago. And I can remember being in there and saying, Lord, if I can just get out. <laughs> Amen. I, I didn't have to promise. Some folks, you know, when, when there's, they, they promise that, Lord, if you do this and do that, I didn't have to promise. I'd already made a commitment a long time ago. So just get me back in the battle. Amen. <laughs> and so he's been uh, very good to me, and uh, he's been calling me into service. And so I thank God for that. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you once again for just allowing us to be in the land of the dying on the way into the land of the living. And we thank you for this uh, church family, this uh, group of uh, believers, baptized believers, uh, who have assembled themselves faithfully to continue the service and to be a part of that great movement that started 125 years ago, Lord. Amen. We know you don't you don't need a lot of numbers. You just need good soldiers. And so, Lord, I'm glad to be in the service and be among the faithful. We ask, Lord, now, we pray for those who wanted to be here and couldn't be here. But we ask now that your Holy Spirit would come and just be with us throughout this service. Let your spirit fall afresh on me, Lord. Move me out of the way that in my stead a vessel you might use to speak to your people. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we find no fault in thee. This is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Let everyone say amen, amen, amen and amen. I bless you. It's so good to, once again, to just be in God's house. Uh, we ask if you turn your attention to the book of Proverbs, the 31st chapter, uh, and the 10th verse. I'm going to hold up just a few verses there that... Uh, Lord, has it directed our attention for this week? It reads as follows. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. Right, Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, reading, understanding of his holy and most righteous word. Amen. Amen. I want to use for a thought today, the virtuous woman. The virtuous woman. And underneath that, you might put slash uh, classy Christian lady. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Classy Christian lady. Amen. I'd be remiss if I didn't say, following last week's sermon where uh, we spoke of the missing man and of some of the conditions that the men are in, Though it was a general message, still, the emphasis um, did hit men, so it sounded, uh, you know, fairly hard, which, you know, we all need to be uh, refreshed and reminded. Sometimes we don't like that. Amen. Sometimes we don't like that, but it's good for us. Amen. The word is always good for us. It, you know, it has been set and, and recorded for us so that we might become more like him, more holy. Uh, and just to qualify that, that word holy, the, uh, the, the world has a, has a um, sometimes a negative apprehension, and even in Christian circles, about the word holy. It, it uses every other word but holy, but we serve a holy God. We ourselves can't be holy because we're flesh, but... Our Savior, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, amen, he puts that holy covering on us and makes us acceptable to God. Am I right about that? 
Amen. 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 Tell me if I'm right. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 So that's not a word that we fear. That's a word we thank God for. Yes, sir. Amen. So, uh, but today's focus is just on uh, the virtuous woman, on, on a little bit about a woman. And I'm a man. Y'all know that. So 125% man. So you want to say, well, you know, oh, but... Uh, I was, I was birthed by a woman, I have raised up with women, and you know, I, I've loved women, and women have loved me. My grandmother, my mother, my sister, and maybe uh, I know my wife even, all right, my daughters. And so I, I take liberty a little bit to talk about this. Amen, just so we know there's some background to it, <laughs> okay, amen. But the Bible speaks to us clearly about a uh, virtuous woman. We live in a time when uh, the world is redefining everything that, that God has set in motion, even a woman. Amen. Even a woman. Eh? You know, the, the role of a woman. I, we would go into deep political waters if, if I broke down just what the world is defining. Amen. Uh, but uh, when I hear a man say his, another man is his wife. You understand, I right? hear a woman say that's her husband. That, that speaks a little bit differently to what God says. I wish I had a witness in here. And so when you look at the virtuous woman, uh, the scripture outlines the qualities. And, 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 and these qualities, though it speaks of a wife and a mother, it also speaks of a woman in general. Amen. And, and I, you know, I used to do a seminar for women called the Love and Life Seminar. And it was designed to enhance their, um, to make them more aware of the design that God had put in them, that they might have, understand that they have a gift. That gift is femininity. You understand that? Now, they don't teach that much nowadays. They don't teach that much nowadays. I, I give a classic example. We're going to talk about the, the, that word lady. But in these days and times, and most of y'all, when we grew up, they used to tell the young ladies, you, the young girls, you know, to be a young lady. But I, I, I challenge you to give that, to ask your daughters and nieces and everybody what a, a lady is supposed to be. Nowadays, they don't have a concept. They say, well, we females. You know we're we're, we're uh, this or that. But they don't understand what it is to be a lady. Okay, and, and our definition in my seminar was, 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 was very basic. A lady is someone who has a high standard about everything that she does. Amen. That's workable, isn't it? Now, if we elevate that and connect, compare that to the virtuous woman, uh, a Christian lady is a woman who has God's standard about everything that they do. Are you with me? Oh, I wish I had a witness. Amen. So it first starts off by saying, who can find one? Well, you know, the, we talked about the fellows last week, and they were around and said, well, I can't find a good lady. Some of them aren't really looking for a good lady. <laughs> uh, they're not really looking for one, but, but they're out there. There are many out there that are trying to do right, serving the Lord, and trying to live a, a, a godly life. But the image is changing so much because what TV and, the, you know, they have these shows now, the housewives of this and the women of that and all that. And uh, I don't watch them, you know, but every now and then I'll catch, uh, my wife likes one that, uh, where they do a little dating, but I happen to see one. Now, I know y'all have seen them, don't tell me you haven't. Now, I was shocked. You know, they're not that they, what they were saying, I was shocked at what they were wearing. Everybody had their, their chests wide open. Uh, now, y'all, listen to me. Now, that's on TV. Now, these were, these were very attractive, glamorous women. But, you know, and I understand a little bit about cleavers, but, you know, I'm thinking, <laughs> but throw that. Now, that's on TV, and the little girls and teenagers are watching that, and they're deciding that if I'm going to be glamorous, I've got to be like what I just see. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Amen. When we were coming up, man, they were sensitive. Don't you know that... Uh, 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 Desi Arnaz and Lucy, they couldn't even, they wouldn't let them even sleep in the same room. They had separate beds. So you could, they wouldn't even let you get a hint. Now they were husband and wife. 
And we've come this far to the point where there's nothing sacred. Because a woman's body is sacred. Amen. It's not supposed to be on display for the world to see, you know, other women to see. And, and I understand that women like men have some type of competitive nature. But the wrong type of competitive nature will take the standard from being up all the way down. <clears throat> I wish I had a witness up in here. We're talking about the worst thing about virtuous, a virtuous woman. And, and so her value is extremely high in comparison to what the world. Now, you know, the world has redefined things, and so you may not be hip, you may not be this or that, but if you're going to live for God, you're going to have to live godly. I still refer to that movie I mentioned to you few about the uh, kingdom of heaven where the, uh, the young man said, uh, God doesn't know me anymore and something. And the guy said, uh, I put no stock in religion. He said, we, I, we put, our stock is not supposed to be in religion per se, it's in Christ. Yeah. To be Christ-like. He said, but, but uh, holiness is how you live. Yeah. Will that work? Yeah. Holiness is how you live. And somebody says, it's not what you say, it's what you do. And, 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 and that's what they're talking about. It says, the heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her. Well, let's be honest. That's, and this is the only reference of, in the Bible where it says you can put your, your trust, all your trust must be in God. But if she's a godly woman, you can put your trust in her. Now, that's a deep statement. Amen. You know now, I don't know about your mother, but you know, I was raised on both sides, my, my Mitchell side and the Trotter side. They were both godly women. <laughs> and, and I had great trust in them. And I trusted if I did something wrong, they were going to straighten me out. <laughs> Amen. So, you know, this is not about just someone who goes to church. Someone, because I always say, don't be impressed because somebody puts a, a cross around their neck or carries a Bible. They're talking about someone who has a deep relationship with God. Because if you have a deep relationship with God, it's going to transform you. Oh, I wish I had a witness. It's going to give you a whole different, because it comes from the inside out, right? You know, the Bible says man looks on the outside. And, I, and I've tried to teach many a young man. I said, don't be uh, so impressed with what's on the outside. But check out the inside. Is that heart right? Is that heart lined up with God? Because you'll be deceived, amen, by what's on the outside. Now, y'all know men are easy to be deceived. Huh? Amen. I know we talked about men. Men are easy to be deceived. And so are women, too, but especially men by what they see. But there is no deception for Christ. He knows, but he transforms us from the inside out. Be not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. And the word will transform you into the holiness. Doesn't take away your beauty. It gives you, in fact, a different beauty. Because it comes from the inside out. The world has uh, our young women thinking, our women thinking that it has to be from the outside in. Oh, no, it comes from the inside. Men know. Amen. Men know they may go through a stage where they, do, they want everything they see, but as time moves on, they want someone that brings a standard to them. Amen. And that's someone who brings God to them. Amen. That's what helps balance us out. That's why he gave us each other. Amen. It's hard for a man, isn't it? It says, it's, if a man finds a wife, what? He finds a good thing. Amen. Because not the cooking and the cleaning and all of that, that's that goes along. That's nice. Uh, but if she is a woman of God, she'll, she can speak to his heart. Amen. She can lead him to Christ. That's what the seminar I told you was about. The seminar wasn't about making women cute. You understand? I said, your femininity was given to you to help him. And, 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 and in some cases to, to, to uh, uh, lead him to... to to the art of femininity is also, with me a lot of times is to be able to get him to do what he needs to do without having to push him to do it. Did y'all understand that? That's the gift. That's the gift. 
Like I said, a man can, can take commands from an a, 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 a officer in the service, you know, do this and do that. And a woman, all she had to do is lean over and say, honey, can you do that for me? <laughs> oh, I wish I had a witness. I wish I had a witness. God designed you that way. I didn't make anybody that way. But guess what? I respond to that too. <laughs> I respond to that too. And the virtuous woman is empowered that way. So her husband can trust her. If we take Samson for a moment, and he was blessed for a reason, to be a judge in Israel. But he didn't value that. He threw it to the side. His parents told him, said, get a woman of your own that believes also in God. But he, he liked, you know, what he liked. And he put his trust. Are you with me? He put his trust in what he liked. <laughs> she wasn't a woman of God. She was one who served other gods. We know the story. <laughs> Not only that, he, he put his head in her lap. <laughs> so make it easy for her to cut his hair. Taking away his blessing and his strength. Amen. It's, uh, so uh, the reality is this. If you don't put your trust in a godly woman, guess what? You can lose your blessings. We talk about the men that are locked up. There are a lot of them are locked up because they were with the wrong woman. Amen. And so we look at this virtuous woman. It identifies she cares for her family. Now, caring for your family does not always mean some women are not married, but they still have other family. Mm -hmm. The funeral that I uh, eulogized that I served yesterday, the initial activity went on by a, a cousin. She stepped in, the cousin stepped in and, and took care of everything for the family. Amen. Family is important. As I mentioned to you about cousin Dan, my cousin, family. The things I did for him was for fam because he was a part of the family. Now, I didn't have to see him all the time. Amen. But I knew him, and I knew what he had done, and I remember seeing him grow all the way growing up. And to be a blessing for him. Amen. As a virtuous woman, a lot of that time, that extra time you have, if you're not married, you can utilize it being a blessing to the family. Amen. Sometimes there's a niece. You know, there's things that you can do in the family and even outside the family. Be a blessing. Have a ministry that is going to bless somebody. Amen. Because in the process of taking care of God's business, I found out God takes care of yours. Huh? You know, some women spend all the time trying to be this and that so that, you know, they can hope to find something. You know, you don't know what you're going to find. You're gonna, you should be waiting for God to send something if, that's, if you're single. Amen. But they speak of a woman here in one sense because back then, most of the time, the women did get married. You know? And so the, the responsibility of that virtuous woman was to see about her family. And this woman is identified as doing it very, very well. Number 12 says she will do him good and not even all the days of her life. Well, it's a total life commitment to God once you accept it. You know, you can't put it down and pick it back up. You've heard me say that. Yeah. Say, no man is fit for the prophet. You're going to put one minute you serving God, the next minute you out there. Oh. Now, you can be led away. Amen. I, I can remember one of my dear friends I worked for IPS had uh, found a young man that she had fell in love with. She told me she was getting married. Well, I'm happy to hear that. You know, I didn't know the young man, but... She said, well, he did have a, you know, a drug problem at one time. I said, okay. I said, is it resolved? And she said, well, she, he's working on it. You know, okay. <laughs> I listened to that, but, you know, it didn't sound good. But she was at that stage where you couldn't tell her anything else. That marriage was going through. You know, and so it was. It was a big, big wedding at one of the large churches here in the city. Well paid, the white gown, or everything, the guy. You know, well, I didn't see him anymore. I went to the wedding, and it was nice. I didn't see him anymore for a while, sis. But after a while, 
I ran into her. I said, well, how are you doing? I said, how's the, you know, how's the, she said, well, we're not together anymore. I said, really? I said, whatever. You know, she said, well, you know. And then finally she whispered into me. She said, you know, she said, I thought I was going to make a difference with him. I said, he, he got me to try cocaine. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a witness. Isn't that something? See, we think. <laughs> no, God's got to change him. <laughs> you can pray for him, but you don't have the power to change. God's got to change him. And ideally, they should already be changed when you decide to start dating because the world can have an effect on you. Thank God that she didn't get addicted to it. But she just, she just added that in at the end. I never will forget that, you know, because that's preaching stuff. That lets you know, no, no, no. The world's got a whole different agenda. Amen. And as, as a child of God, amen, it is best you wait on the Lord. Amen. Instead of trying to rush into a situation, trying to make a situation, because you can rush in and next thing you know, it's affecting you. Amen. Amen. So we look at the virtuous woman. It says to that it goes on to say this whole chapter, it runs to the 31st verse of this uh, uh, 31st chapter. And in it, it highlights many things that she does. One of the things that is mentioned in there is that she helps the needy. Being a blessing. Of course, this is a time of year, as you said, I used to love, uh, as I pastored, uh, the deacons and uh, uh, the members of we love blessing folks. Amen. It's just something about blessing in the name of the Lord to see people's, you know, lives changed and affected. But it says that's one aspect of that virtuous woman. That is that she cares about others, enough to go forth and do something uh, to bless somebody else. It says she would buy land. Uh, she had many roles. She was a realtor. If you, you know, if you think she was just a domesticated, according to this, she was a realtor. She bought land, you know. She, she made things. She sold things. She was a busy person. The Bible says the idle mind is the devil's workshop. Well, it can be. Amen. Of course, if you sit around enough and watch those programs, that's yeah. amen. I was wondering, I said, well, you know, the wives of this, uh, you know, on and on and on, but they all seem to be the same thing. People being busy about other stuff. You know, be busy about God's stuff. Be busy about your family. Take some time and pray for your family. Use some of that time spiritually in a wise manner, and you'll see that the quality of life will improve. It will improve. And even if you have an ungodly man, guess what? You're, you sanctify him with your service. And you'd be surprised the effect that you can have. Instead of saying, well, I'm just going to leave him alone. Amen. No, you don't have to, but if you love on him right, amen. If your words are right, it speaks also here. It mentions about her. She speaks of wisdom. You have to ask God for wisdom. Yeah. Amen. Wisdom is the proper use of knowledge in such a way that it's, it's beneficial. Yeah. And God gives wisdom. Yeah. I've ran into a lot of educated fools. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. Have, you, have you, you know, folks, titles, and the, that never impressed me. I mean, I'm glad you have a PhD or you were skilled this or that, but I've always looked beyond that. I'm like, what kind of person are you? I had a professor at IUPUI, and I felt sorry for him. He had a PhD in sociology. Whenever I came into his cubicle, <laughs> he would be talking to himself like he's in another world. You know, I was a young guy, and finally I'd get his attention, and we'd talk. I said, well, man, this guy is, he's not together. Well, but, you know, he's a PhD, and he's getting paid by IUPUI. I guess he's together enough, but, uh, you know, unless you're talking to God. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't talking to God. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what that guy was doing. <laughs> but, uh, but the words you speak are very powerful. We had a section in our seminar about that. Uh, the Bible said, kind word can turn away anger. And coming from the lips of a woman, it can, can change everything. The one thing I would always advocate is never argue with a man. Never try to get loud and physical with a man because he was designed 
to respond to that in a negative way. I wish I had a witness. You know, he's designed it, but the Bible, the Lord blessed the virtuous woman. Her voice ain't going to rise like that. Amen. She's going to try to be a peacemaker. He's going to try to calm things down, to get his spirit down. Amen. He says using wise words. You know, when we look at this situation, we realize that the virtuous woman is just a classy Christian woman. Amen. That has a standard about everything she does. It breaks my heart. We have, where's that young lady here that I saw, the, the little girl, amen. That, that I can look at her and see the care. Oh, I wish I had a witness. You know, see, I can look at her and see the care. She didn't fix her hair. <laughs> she didn't put her, her little uh, uh, cute outfit on. A mother did. Someone, that means she took care and time. It breaks my heart when I see little kids running around all oh, kinds of ways with no, and the mama steps out and looks like she's, you know, got little money on her, and the kid is undone. Yeah. Amen. That's not a virtuous woman. I know I, whoever's listening to this, I listen, you know, I'm just calling it straight up as the Lord would have me. Yeah. Amen. I, I'll say one thing about my wife. If y'all remember those daughters we had, they never stepped out of that house without that hair done. I remember still taking time, you know, wherever we went because that was her nature. Amen. God put in a mother, if she's a mother uh, that knows the Lord, she's going to see about her children being together. It's not going to all be about her and all be about, about daddy. That child. Amen. That's a virtuous. Anybody have one like that? Oh, I wish I had a witness. I know I had one like that. From the moment you step in that door, you can go from one end to another. It may not, it wasn't a mansion. It wasn't a suburban. It was in a city house. But from one end to the other. <laughs> I tell the kids, we live in a house with three bathrooms, and we make sure. But we had one bathroom. And you could go in there anytime you want. Because everything was decent and in order. Oh, I wish I had a witness. That's because there was a virtuous woman in the house. And God got us ready for church every Sunday. Oh, wow. The Bible's identifying here. I want you to take your time and read. There's a lot of things in there. Well, it appears this woman is almost perfect. And nobody is perfect. Don't get me wrong. But it starts with the foundation you have. And that foundation has to be Jesus Christ. And you have to learn. And, and God gives you examples in the church family. But the world doesn't have that all the time. They're getting examples from TV. They're getting examples from, from uh, 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 the rappers and all the entertainers. And we know that's the craziest bunch on, in the country. I was watching one TV, uh, and the, just where I was, I was looking, you know, I'm always looking for sports, or I'm looking for an uh, army movie or a cowboy movie. Every once in a while, comedy, that's good. But it, before I changed it, there was a woman that, ran in to meet the guy she was moving in with him. And, 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 and she was excited about, and he gave her the key to go in and everything. And I'm sitting there saying, wow, they're, they're highlighting young people moving in. Now, most of us know, some of us probably lived with some folk back in the day. We was young. We didn't all walk with the Lord. Some of us did, but some didn't. That doesn't work very well, does it? It's easy to move in, but boy, you have to run out of there sometimes. Because it's not right. It's not right. You know, there's a benefit. There's what they say. Sometimes you can get to the milk without really owning the cow. Everybody remember that one? Amen. Amen. But that's what the world has done. It's, it is making wrong right and right wrong. Now, when the world gets mixed up like that, you're going to have some problems. The kids are going to have some problems. But we're called, as followers of Christ, to teach what is right and then to stand by it. And as the days go, go by, it's going to become harder because the world is going to reject more and more those who try to teach. Already now, you know, they've compromised so much. And the church, the God's holding the church accountable, too, because the church has backed away from teaching right living holiness. Amen. We've highlighted singing and a whole lot of other stuff. 
you know. But the Bible says train up a child in the way it should go. The teaching is the key. Emphasis. And one thing I learned from one denomination, they said they wouldn't, when they, they emphasized building churches, they wouldn't build a sanctuary first. They, they'd build a fellowship hall with the teaching classes first. And then from the teaching classes, the churches would grow into where they need a bigger sanctuary. Look like some of the, some of the uh, churches got it wrong. They wanted a big, beautiful sanctuary. Well, you can fill a church up with a, a lot of people because it looks good. But there may not be one saint in there that knows what the Great Commission is. You understand? <laughs> you, you say Genesis, and they go to, to Luke in the New Testament. You know what I'm saying? Because they haven't been taught. We have to learn the ways of God. We have to be taught what is right spiritually. You know, we, don't, we don't just grab, get it all. We have to learn it. But as we get it, it makes us stronger, makes us wiser. It makes us able to endure the hard times. It makes us able to have a closer relationship with God. It gives us power. Amen. That when our prayers go up to God, he hears them. I wish I had a witness. You understand? That's why I heard the saying a long time. I said, I don't want just anybody praying for me. Amen. Yeah. Wish me well, fine. But I, I want some saints to know the Lord. Pray for me. That's why somebody sang that song and said, my mother prayed for me. <laughs> Amen. Virtuous woman. Classy Christian lady. I pray that you take time to go into this area. There's a lot more to this that I could say, but uh, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit is impressed upon those that have heard this, even for men to know what to look for in a woman. Because it is true that all that glitters is not gold. And all this she is, her attractiveness, uh, this is what the Bible is teaching us, her attractiveness is not because she could do all these things. Her attractiveness is because of her reverence to God and the character that God has developed in her. Did anybody get that? Right. Yeah. As a young man, I always looked on the inside of the woman. I want to see what that heart is because I don't wake up and a woman's trying to stab me, you understand? <laughs> or going through my pockets, you understand? Oh, listen, it's out there. It's out there. My, one of my dear friends at, from Christmas Addicts, and he was a mild mannered fellow. He got addicted to drugs. He gave a woman a ride to a house. He said she was very attractive, so she invited him up. Gave him some, some wine to drink and then gave him something to smoke. And that smoke was laced. But he, he was, uh, you know, he was uh, intoxicated by her in the atmosphere and everything. You know, it's beautiful. And later on, became, it affected his life so that he lost his family. Now, this wasn't a street guy. This was a, a guy who liked to write poetry. Mild-mannered guy that spent the rest of his life struggling with that. Lost his family, his relationship with his kids, all because, you know, he was caught up with what he saw. See, you know, we can, don't think, don't think you can't be, uh, you know, caught up in this world because it's alluring. And the opposite sex, we have a natural attraction. It can be, it can be devastating. That's why somebody said, just a closer walk. <laughs> that implies that I may not be close enough. Let me get closer to God. Huh? Let me go step for step with God. Huh? It was it Enoch that walked with the Lord? And finally he wasn't. He was, got so, he got so close to God. God said, come on with me. Could not be found. Well, our desire is to get closer. Because if we don't, you, you can try to play the middle if you want to with a leg over here and a leg over there. Don't slip, because <laughs> gonna, it's going to be pretty painful. You can't straddle the fence with God. And remember, he said, you can't be lukewarm with me. He said, because I spill you out of my mouth. No, you got to decide. That's what, that's what Joshua said. When, it, when they brought it to him, said, well, some of the folk are back there getting fallen into old ways, doing old things again. He wasn't moved. He had led them as far. He said, well, 
you know, if it, if, it, if it pleases them to do what they want to do with other gods, so be it. But he knew the God he served. He had brought him all the way through. He saw what that God had done with Moses. And what he had done with him, he had dethroned, dethroned 33 kings. He had been undefeated in battle because of the power of God on him and in him. So he just looked back and said, well, choose ye this day who you will serve. You know, I ain't going to argue with you about it. He said, as, but that's for me and my house. <laughs> the God that brought me through. <laughs> the God that made a way out of no way. <laughs> the God that blessed my house. <laughs> the God that put food on my table. <laughs> the God that gave me strength to fight my battles. I'm going to stay with him. for the woman who wants the blessings of God to be in her heart, be in her life, got to be a virtuous woman. And I say, ask God to help you. Maybe some areas that, 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 that you struggle with, but that's all right. I always say there's no human situation, no, not one, that God can't solve. You don't have to go to a psychiatrist. Don't get me wrong, yeah, you know, if you want some counsel. But ultimately, the counselor, the one that not only can give you advice, but that can fix the situation. You see, the counselor, the psychologist, they only can tell you about the situation. They can say, give you some exercises. You can tell God all about it, and guess what? Next thing you know, it's fixed. He'll fix you and fix the situation. That's why they say, what a mighty God we serve. I want that kind of God on my side. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And I'm saying to the sisters, if you're not married, so be it right now. Uh -huh. You make sure that God is in your life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And if you're going to be, take it to the Lord in prayer and then bring them around. I always tell them, if you think about marrying someone, bring them to church with you. See if they want to come. <laughs> And, and the biggest flag, if he said, well, I don't believe in God, then you say, well, okay, that's great. And then you go on another way. Yes. Uh, I wish I had a witness, because if you don't believe in God, then he ain't going to believe in you. Yes. Sometimes what we think is good for us, it looks good, sounds good, may even taste good, but God's got something better. Yes. Huh? Yes, he knows what we need. He knows what's best for us. Amen. Virtuous woman. I thank God that we got some here in the church. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. And I know that you take the teachings. They say people only remember. I forgot what the percentage is. They don't remember a lot about what they hear on Sunday. That's just human nature. Other things. But what you learn. Study to show yourselves approved unto God. Read this area very well and pray for it. Take that beautiful little daughter. Keep bringing her to church. You have to be an example. The greatest teacher also is what you do yourself. We have to be concerned about uh, our legacy, our prodigy, who's coming up behind us. You know, pull that daughter aside or that, that niece aside, that granddaughter aside, and start putting some positive things. You have to beat them over the head. With, pray with them, but drop some seeds into them. Because if you don't, you're sending them into a world that we ourselves don't know that well. And there are far more traps, yes. amen, and tricks and things that can get them yes. off to the side. Yes. Oh, yes. That can cause them to stumble and fall. Yes. That can get them addicted to things. Yes. You see, it's not just that some women get addicted to the wrong man. No, and that man leads them to destruction. I wish I had a witness. Yes. Oh, yes. Some guys get addicted to the wrong man and it leads them to destruction. But if we do our jobs with God's help, uh -huh. guess what? Our next generation, and the generation after, amen, will walk with the Lord. And even if they stray a little bit, the Bible says train up a child in the way it should go. After a while, it, they'll come on back. <laughs> and the way the world is going now, they may come back running. <laughs> and like the prodigal son, God's got his arms opened up. Say, come back in. I've got a place for you. I've got a home for you. God bless you. I pray something was said this morning that encouraged you. Amen. Amen.
song that is playing.